A BBC reporter absolutely embarrasses himself during an interview with Elon Musk, all because the only thing he brought to the table was his bias without doing his homework. Let this be a lesson to all the journalists and reporters and all the media outlets. Do your homework before getting to interview people like Elon Musk. And also try not to have to show your bias too much because these days we can easily call it out. It's not like the past anymore. The dinosaurs are being exposed. So this is about the interview that James Clayton, who is the BBC North America tech reporter, so he's not even a political reporter, yet at the same time, his line of questioning, which we're going to show you in a second, with Elon Musk was purely political. And he was also, obviously, formerly BBC Newsnight. Yeah, that says everything. <laughs> we already know what's going to happen here. So he did this interview at Google and head office with uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk was very friendly, saying, yeah, feel free to come in, interview me, and see what we're going to talk about. And of course, the interview went towards... Uh, hateful speech and hateful content basically mean tweets um by twitter users and the questioning was essentially do you not think that uh, it seems to be that hate has gone up ever since you became the boss of twitter without providing any evidence considering actually twitter under um, elon has created the better uh, version of uh, moderation as a system where if you actually have hateful speech as in if you incite violence or things like that you were getting into more trouble compared to the past, whereas mean tweets don't get you in trouble. Now, anyway, let's go to the interview. It's facts that used to be in content moderation, and, and, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation, and they just say they just there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, something that you want to address? You're talking about? I mean, you use Twitter, right? Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, but just a personal anecdote, like what do you do? I don't. Personally, my uh, for you, I would see I get I get more of that kind of content. Yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to talk to the rest of for, for the rest of Twitter. You, you but, sorry to interrupt. Just the beginning, the first answer he gave, the James guy said, yeah, yeah, I use Twitter and I, I, I see personally that's gone up. So remember this answer. Remember what he said that, yes, he uses Twitter and he can see more hate. Then is it less of what he says, because he's going to flip flop. More hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content probably. you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So you think if I, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, tr I'm trying to say what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked. Yeah, it's a good point. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it should be banned, James. You've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's but, what I'm asking for examples. Can right. You, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't. Use, I, I, honestly, you I don't. Can't use, name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore. Because I. I don't even use Twitter anymore. What happened to your first answer, James? I just don't particularly like it. Actually, a lot of people. A lot of people are quite similar. I. I, I only. Well, well, I only look well, at my, on my followers. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks, and well, I. Then I how did you see the hateful content? Content. Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking you for one example. Right, and and I, you can't I, give us a whole. And, and, and I'm saying, I, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con of content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed. You just lied. What? No, no. What I claimed was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether hmm. whether it has on my feed or example. not, I mean, I, right, and you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK, uh -huh. they will say that. So you, they, look, these people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, do you know? That I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experience more hateful content, 
and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's haven't, absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this table content? <laughs> because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We have, we <laughs> only have a certain amount of time. Um, well, well, COVID that's... misinformation. <laughs> You've lost the argument, James Clayton. Let's move on. Yeah, it's not really that important, Elon. Let's just move on. Well, <laughs> I think it's important to show you the result of what happened after the interview. These are the live footage we had after the interview. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Elon was completely destroyed. <laughs> James Clayton of the BBC. It is absolutely embarrassing. Why? Why do you not do your homework? It's not really that difficult to do it. We had a, a number of uh, memes created on Twitter after this interview. For example, we had the <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> and you can see in the picture, you got the tombstone of James Clayton and the BBC. He's being completely buried by Elon. And uh, <laughs> we also had things owned by elon musk we got twitter owned by elon musk tesla owned by elon musk spacex owned by elon musk and the bbc just got owned by elon musk it's not that difficult do your homework try not to create your truth simply ask questions as a journalist and the interview interview will answer the question simple it's not really a hard job but apparently it is these days anyway let me know your thoughts in the comment section on my 2c and we are the media.